Howdy folks, welcome to a Dark Souls Crash Course. This is going to be a video intended for anyone who has bounced off the game in the past, or who just found it too difficult, or uh, perhaps was scared away from trying the game due to memes about its difficulty. I don't really think Dark Souls is a particularly hard game, and uh, I'm not going to show you necessarily the best way to play, but I will show you an easy way to play, uh, and certainly not the fastest way to play. Um, your character's appearance and gender have no effect on their stats, so pick whatever you want, it doesn't matter. Uh, your class, of course, does. However, unlike most RPGs, your class in Dark Souls doesn't really decide anything p past the beginning of the game. Um, it's your starting gear and your starting stats, and that's basically it. Um, your more experienced players uh, will start with Thief, or Hunter, or Pyromancer. Uh, most of your level 1 runs are done as a Pyromancer because they start at level 1 and because they start with a Pyromancy Flame. Uh, most of your speed runs are done as a Hunter because they start with a Bow. Um, but we're going to start with a Knight because they start with very heavy armor, a tough shield, and a strong sword. All stuff that makes it easy to win fights. Uh, for your gift, there's really only two things that make sense for experienced players, which are the Black Fire Bombs. You get ten of them. Uh, and the Master Key, which allows you to uh, take a few shortcuts early in the game. Uh, however, those are both for experienced players. Uh, for this run, we're going to start with the Tiny Beings Ring, which, contrary to its description, uh, slightly increases your max HP. Uh, like I said, your appearance doesn't matter. Take whatever you want. It is literally irrelevant. And here we go. I'm going to be skipping the cutscenes and the dialogue. Uh, if you want to read them or listen to them, you can do that on your own run. <laughs> uh, however, uh, I do recommend you to seriously read these messages from the developers. Uh, even if you've played before, if it's been a while, uh, they will tell you the controls and uh, may give you some information that you had forgotten or were never aware of. You start with your class's starting armor set, but you uh, don't start with your weapons, and there's a reason for that, which you'll see in a second. Here's the first bonfire. Bonfires are like resting points for the game. Uh, when you rest at a bonfire, you recover your status and your healing charges, uh, but you also respawn all of the enemies that you've killed. through this door is the game's first boss, and you think, oh wait, I don't even have a weapon yet. Oh, well, that's correct. You have this broken sword. It's, uh, not very effective. Let's just run through this gate over here. If you took a whack, you can rest here at this bonfire. In this hallway, you'll get your class's starting equipment. Uh, usually a shield and a weapon. The knight, of course, starts with the broadsword that I mentioned, and the tower kite shield. Um, this shield is actually quite good for a starting equipment. Uh, you can see that there, the damage reduction percent in the center of the screen. It has 100% physical and 70% fire, meaning it will block all physical damage from any attacks that don't overwhelm it. Uh, and it will block 70% of fire damage. Uh, also, the stability there of 58 is pretty good for considering the weight of 3 kilograms. It is a good shield for a starting character. You are supposed to use your shield to block that guy's arrows as you run up to him, but if you just run up to him, he'll run away from you. One tip about using shields in Dark Souls is that you should only be blocking whenever you need to. As you notice, if you hold your shield up when you're low on stamina, you will recover it very slowly. So keep your shield at your side as much as you can. See that ball up there? There's not a lot of traps in Dark Souls, but the ones that are there are usually very obvious. Just keep your eyes open. Come in here, talk to Oscar of Astora. He will give you your Estus Flask and the Undead Asylum Floor 2 East Side Key. 
That's up here. Amusingly, we Americans would probably call this the third floor, but... Ah, uh, whatever. Keep reading these messages. Um, this one in particular here is a little confusing. When they say left stick, what they really mean is left stick forward. Uh, and what they really mean by that is, what they really mean by that is, smash the left stick up like you're doing an up smash in Smash Brothers. Uh, so if you move the left stick forward, to move forward while doing a light attack, you'll get a kick. There's your light attack, and there's the kick. Kick is very useful against shielded enemies and certain other enemies. Meanwhile, if you do that with a heavy attack, you get that. Uh, there's also unique attacks for whenever you're sprinting uh, and whenever you're rolling. And the sprinting attack is the same as the backstep attack. Uh, that was a that was a back roll, not a backstep. Like that. Careful against this guy or these guys in the beginning of the game because they're pretty tough and they have. Uh, pretty solid damage on their long swords. Their move set is garbage, but they're, they're pretty dangerous as far as it goes. And there's the asylum demon. Do a plunging attack. It'll kind of teleport you onto his head, and uh, that takes off a nice little chunk of his life for you. Plus, you're fully equipped now. If you land that plunging attack, he really should be no problem at all. Just block his attacks. Even if you're out of range, like, he's not going to land on me here, but he still has, like, a shockwave that comes around him whenever he lands. Uh, and as long as you block that, you won't be staggered by it. See? Whoops. It was an accidental kick in, but you just have to get used to that. Notice that even big heavy attacks like that, you can still block with this kind of shield. It'll just make you uh, flip backwards. Pretty good trick in this heavy plate armor. And there we go. A silent demon down. No big deal. It gives you the big pilgrim's key, which is for this door and a humanity item. Uh, humanity is a very special item that whenever you use it, um, it gives you one humanity stat. It's kind of hard to explain. I call it hard and soft humanity. The humanity item in your inventory is a hard humanity, and whenever you use it, which I'll do now, it restores your HP, and then if you look in the top left, I have one humanity. Uh, that also shows up on your character sheet, which you can see down at the bottom left there. Uh, I'll explain more about humanity in a second. Before we leave the asylum, I should note that right over there you see that bird's nest. Uh, I'm not going to get into it now, but or at all in this video, but uh, you can trade items with some baby crows in the nest. Uh, and that's useful to acquire various materials. Right at the end of the, of the uh, cliff there, and the uh, crow will take you to Firelink Shrine. Right here is the Firelink Shrine Bonfire. Um, we're going to use our one humanity to reverse hollowing. Instead of being a, a, a nasty, dried up hollow, we're going to be a human again, at least, sort of. Uh, being human uh, has the major downside of uh, making you able to be invaded by other players for PvP. Uh, however, it has the major upside of giving you bonuses to many of your defenses, particularly curse resist and also increases your item discovery. Um, we're going to run over here and grab some more hard humanity. Um, it's up to you if you want to use it. And you can hold on to it in this way, in which case you won't lose it when you die. Uh, or you can go ahead and use it. Now, technically, whenever you die, you don't lose anything. Uh, what happens is that your souls, your current souls, down in the bottom right, and your humanity in the top in the top left, uh, both get left on your bloodstain that you leave behind. If you can 
get back to your bloodstain, you can reclaim your humanity and your souls. Uh, if you die again, however, you will leave a new bloodstain, and you can only have one bloodstain at a time, which means your other one vanishes. Uh, of course, the real answer is just don't die. Uh, talk to the Crestfallen Knight here. If you've never played before, he'll give you some advice on what to do. But basically, your first goal is to ring the two bells of awakening. Uh, there's one up top and one below. Um, I'm going to come down here and show you the... This is the uh, Firekeeper for Firelink Shrine. Um, you can't talk to her because her tongue's been cut out. But um, basically, her job is to maintain the fire here at the bonfire. Because this bonfire has a fire keeper, you get 10 Estus Flask charges whenever you rest at it. Uh, normally, you would only get 5. Uh, so we're going to go up here real quick. We're going to grab some fire bombs. Yoink. And then we're going to go over here. And we're going to talk to Petrus. Petrus is a cleric. Hello there. And uh, he, first he asks you to go away. If you talk to him again, he'll try to bribe you to go away. And talk to him a third time, and he'll offer to teach you miracles. You have to be in his covenant, which is the Way of the White, to learn miracles from him. However, the knight starts in the Way of the White covenant. So, not a concern. Um... We want to buy his heal miracle, but it costs 4,000 souls. We don't have enough yet. Um, don't buy a talisman from him. Uh, instead, Come again. go up these stairs over here, and we're going to go get a free talisman. Although, before we do that, run up here and grab this soul item. That's a consumable item that will give you some souls when you use it. Drop down this ledge here, and then drop down this ledge here. And we're in a grassy area behind the Firelink Shrine. Open up these chests, and you get a bunch of loot. Six Homeward Bones that will return you to the last bonfire you rested at whenever you use them. A Morning Star and a Talisman. There's that free talisman we were talking about. And four Cracked Red Eye Orbs. Those are items that you can use as you consume them to invade another player's world. It's for PvP. Uh, also, these are for PvP. Uh, you throw these at another player to prevent them from healing with Estus. Now you see down there? There's a couple skeletons down there. They're all in pieces right now, but they're going to get up whenever I go down there. Uh, I could go down there and fight them off using that Morning Star I just found, or using my sword. Uh, but either way, that would take some time. Uh, so what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to take my armor off. And you notice how much faster I move now? Look at this, look how fast this sprint is. Uh, it can also roll quite adeptly. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to run down there, and we're going to roll away. The... Um, Again, I could kill the skeletons, but it's it really would just take a long time. And the thing about it is, um, they're only worth 50 souls. Uh, whenever the normal hollow guys over here are worth 60, so it's really not worth it. If you don't take your armor off and you just run away from those guys with your armor on, uh, you are sufficiently slow as a knight that um, you will unfortunately... Uh, uh, they will they will follow you all the way over here, uh, and you won't be able to rest at the bonfire to reset them. So, what we're going to do right now is uh, we're going to use our soul items and see if that gets us to 4,000. I don't think it's going to, uh, but we'll see. In fact, that's the only one I had, so yeah. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go uh, first. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, make sure we have our fire bombs on our hot bar here. And we're going to go down this secret stairwell. I say secret, but it's just kind of hidden. It's not really a secret. Be careful you don't run off. Go around here. And down these stairs. And into this elevator room. Step on the platform. 
And there you go. This is going to take us down to the New Londo Ruins. Which are, uh, pretty majestic. As far as it goes. Can drop right here for some more souls. Uh, this is an area intended for uh, much, much later in the game. However, there are a bunch of weak hollows here. If you uh, really want to, you can murder them all for 20 souls apiece. Uh, they're not aggressive, so there's no real reason to do that. Uh, if you go down here, there is a blacksmith. Hmm? Uh, Rickert of Vinheim. Uh, you don't really need him uh, for any reason right now, but he can go ahead and repair your equipment uh, if if it's become damaged. It probably hasn't. Uh, if you're playing a magic character, uh, he is the character who will uh, upgrade uh, weapons on the magic upgrade path for you. Uh, but let's come over here, ignore the bit of loading lag. I'm playing the old uh, version of Dark Souls, which instead of remastered, uh, which has some performance problems. There's a thrusting sword you can use if you want. It's very good in PvP. And uh, we're going to come down here and we're going to break this and hit this guy. And we get two transient curses. Now this area we're about to enter here, and we're only going here briefly because we're just going in here to pick up an item. Uh, this area that we're about to enter here is full of ghosts, and ghosts can't be damaged normally. They also ignore your armor and your shield. Uh, you have to use a transient curse item, which will give you a short curse uh, that allows you to affect them and defend against them normally. Uh, ghosts are intended for much later in the game, and they're very tough, even with a curse on. Um, but they are weak to magic and fire. Uh, this is much easier if you're playing a sorcery type character. But what we're basically going to do is we're going to block their attacks until they're standing on each other like that, and then we're going to throw a couple fire bombs, and this should kill them both. Yep, there we go. Thanks for the 400 souls. Uh, come over here in this corner, break this jar. Just like the last one, there's two more transient curses, and we're just going to hold on to those. We don't need to use them right now. Come over here through this arch. You see that item over there? That is a big deal item. Uh, but there's ghosts along the way, so step out on the bridge. That'll make the ghosts pop up, and once again, pull up your shield, guard, until they're all piled up in one spot, like that. That's close enough, probably. Throw a couple fire bombs. If you have to use an extra one, or even if you have to use all six, it's fine. Don't bother trying to hit him with your sword. It's not not worth it. Oh, and there's two more transient curses. <laughs> um, be careful walking out here because there is uh, death on either side of that walkway. And there's our first Firekeeper soul. Uh, instead of walking back, we're going to use a Homeward Bone. It's just so much faster. If you really want to, you can sit there and farm the ghosts. They're a lot more valuable than most of what you're going to fight. Uh, but it's just not practical in terms of time. Uh, they take a really long time uh, to kill. Uh, let's see. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take that Firekeeper soul. We're going to go over here to the Firekeeper. And she can use that soul to upgrade our Estus Flask. That gives a huge improvement to how much healing you get out of each slug on your Estus Flask. Very, very useful. Uh, then we're going to go over here. Actually, before we do that, why don't we... Go ahead, and we're going to level up one time. We're going to raise our faith to 12. That will let us use the heal spell, but unfortunately we don't. We no longer have enough to buy it from Petrus. However, there's a whole bunch of enemies over here that are just full of delicious souls. So let's head up the stairs here. 
to our first real enemy in the main game. These hollow soldiers here are not too dangerous, but they do have a couple of moves that can be pretty challenging to deal with. Um, one is that they have the same spaz out move as the regular hollows, uh, where they attack very rapidly. And the other one is that, that lunging or leaping attack. Um, it comes out very fast and it goes very far. Fortunately, as a knight, we are very tough and don't have to worry too much about taking a few hits. Especially with that upgraded Estus Flask. Let's go back down here and let's kill this Hollow Knight. There we go. That gets us over our 4,000 souls, but before we teleport back, before we walk back, uh, let's instead go over here and make this little drop. You step off this ledge, you end up on the edge of this bridge here. Be careful not to walk off. And you collect a Ring of Sacrifice. Uh, while you're wearing the Ring of Sacrifice, if you die, you don't drop a bloodstain at all you keep your soul and you keep your humanity. Um, this is actually mostly useful whenever you already have a bloodstain down with soul and humanity on it. Because if you're wearing the Ring of Sacrifice and you die, you don't leave a bloodstain. Which means you don't overwrite your previous bloodstain. The downside is that uh, the Ring of Sacrifice breaks uh, the first time you use it. So, save it for a special occasion. Go ahead and pull that off of there. Alright, let's talk to Petrus. And let's purchase the heal miracle. Come again. Uh, and now we need to go over to a bonfire. Whenever you're going to use magic, you have to attune it first. And uh, while we're looking at that, I'll go over the stats with you real quick. Um, for this specific playstyle, we're not going to raise our strength or dexterity, and the reason is because in the early game your weapons don't really scale very well on your stats, and that's the only purpose of these two stats, is to increase your weapon damage. Um, well, and Dexterity also slightly increases uh, magic casting speed, but it's pretty small. Um, we're never upgrade resistance, even if you're doing a later playthrough with a different build, don't bother upgrading resistance. All it does is increase your defenses, uh, but leveling up, period, increases your defenses somewhat, so it's really not worth uh, intelligence is the main stat for sorcery. Faith is the main stat for miracles. Uh, pyromancy doesn't require any stats. Uh, and then these top three stats are the ones we're mostly concerned about. Uh, attunement will give you extra spell casting slots, so you can equip more spells at once. Uh, vitality increases your maximum hit points, and endurance increases your maximum stamina and your maximum equip load. Uh, so we're going to attune heal in our one attune slot that we started with. Uh, and we're going to leave. And now, finally, after doing all that, we're ready to head into the game proper. <laughs> In another game, you'd probably have some historic music or, or whatever, but uh, Dark Souls isn't really that kind of game. Everything kind of sucks, and that's kind of the point. Come on now. Yeah, this one thing to be aware of is that all of the hollow enemies have their own Estus Flasks, and they are uh, eager to use them. Unfortunately, his max HP is so crappy that I still able, was able to one-shot him in one light attack <laughs> after healing. It can be tempting to go after the Firebomb Thrower first, but deal with this guy first, because uh, the Firebomb guy can't really hit you from over there. Or when you're over there. Alright. I wonder if he's alive down there. Nope. <laughs> I just got souls from him, so now I know he's dead. So one important thing to get used to in Dark Souls is managing uh, one-handing versus two-handing. Uh, generally with a shield, you'll want to be one-handing so you can use your shield, but there are times, like this, when you'll want to change to using two hands. Uh, the reason 
in this specific case is because the broadsword has these wide attacks that can make it hard to use in tight quarters. But whenever you change it two-handing, it has uh, a vertical move set that makes it easier to use in tight quarters. The downside being, of course, that you can't block with your shield. You instead block with your sword, and that's not great. You want to avoid doing that if you can. You also do slightly more damage while two-handing. Uh, the broadsword uh, doesn't gain a ton of damage from two-handing, but uh, a little bit. Honestly, I'm a pretty big fan of the broadsword. Uh, that there is a fog gate. They are at the borders of PvP zones and also at the entrances to boss rooms. Where are you going, buddy? Going all the way around there? Um, whenever you see a fog wall, you better be ready when going through it because it can be a boss room and there can be a boss inside and if you're not ready, you might get trashed. Um, but most of the fog walls in the game are not boss rooms. Most of the fog walls in the game are uh, basically borders between areas or zones. Uh, and the idea there is that whenever uh, you're playing in PvP, um, you know, since this is an open world game, uh, that way uh, an invader or an invadee uh, can't just run across the whole map to get away from you. At some point they're going to have to turn around and fight. There is very little point to this, but uh, here's some rubbish. The birds I mentioned at the asylum, because you can go back to the asylum, the birds I mentioned at the asylum uh, will take the rubbish for something, I don't remember what, but it's more useful than rubbish anyway. Over here, grab this. And, uh, hello sir. Alright. That's all the stuff from here. Let's run over here and hit this fog wall. Whenever you're in a new area, it's important to explore. Uh, because you can find a lot of items in out-of-the-way places. Like this right here underneath the stairs. But if you're someone who's going to enjoy Dark Souls, exploration is probably in your blood. The bridge is out, but... We can get across there in another way. Hello! We'll see him again in a little while. This uh, tactic of luring these guys to the stairs here keeps you from having to deal with the crossbowmen. Uh, except for this third guy. Notice I didn't get staggered whenever I got shot in the in the shoulder with a crossbow bolt. That's because uh, this armor is very heavy and has a lot of poise. Poise you can think of as basically an invisible meter that uh, whenever it's empty you get staggered. Die. Uh, there's another bonfire, but uh, before we do that, let's go over here. and deal with these guys. Rude. See, I was out of stamina, so I couldn't kill him there. There we go. Roll through the boxes and uh, reveal a stairway. And come down here and talk to your first merchant. Well, now. <laughs> this is the uh, undead merchant male. There's also an undead merchant female in a different area. Um, here he sells lots of useful stuff. The orange guidance soapstone is what you'll use if you want to place messages for other players. Um, we want to buy the residence key, which is required to get one of the NPCs later in the game. Actually, two of the NPCs. Uh, 
you can buy the repair box with 3,000 souls. This lets you repair your own weapons and armor instead of having to go to a blacksmith. You can also spend 1,000 souls on the bottomless box. Now here's the thing about the bottomless box. What this does is let you tidy up your inventory. Items that are carried instead of being worn don't affect your encumbrance. So there's, there's, you really don't need this, but if you want to tidy up your inventory with weapons you're never going to use or armor you're never going to use, uh, you can throw them on the bottomless box. So, um, And you can buy most of the starting weapons and equipment here if you want to try out something different. Uh, a lot of these can also be gotten as drops, like the skeletons can drop the scimitar. You saw me get a short sword a bit ago, uh, and so on. He has ammo for the... He also sells uh, the short bow, and he has ammo for that. Uh, and then there's also the chain armor you can buy. Thank you, Kai. Uh, but mainly you want the residence key for him. That's the number one thing you need out of him. The most obvious trap ever. Comically, if you just walk by that, he still doesn't hit you. <laughs> With that first swing. It's just a spooky, I guess. I'll deal with these guys. If you rush into this, it's possible to have to fight these four guys at once, and that's kind of a pain. These little hollows are not the most dangerous enemy, but they're not harmless. I mean, they're not, you know. We're going to use our heal spell. There we go. Saves us from having to use an Estus. The nice thing about having the heal spell is that heal always comes back when you rest. Estus comes back when you rest, but as I mentioned earlier, at most bonfires you'll only get five unless you spend a humanity to kindle that bonfire. Here's our first throwing knives. I'm going to go ahead and put those on the bar and take that off. Uh, and then here's the jump to get across over there. Uh, once again, I'm going to take off the armor. Uh, in fact, I'm going to take off the weapon, too. And we're going to do this like a nudist. And I think that'll do it. Just barely, yep. Yeah, that's that's basically impossible to do with any kind of equipment on. You really need to be in the buff for that one. Come across over here and uh, grab your crossbow. Uh, we're not going to use any bows for this, uh, or crossbows. Uh, the main advantage of crossbows is that they can be used one-handed. Uh, the disadvantage of crossbows is that they really don't scale in any stats, so in the late game, crossbows don't have the damage of an archer using a longbow, um, or the composite bow, or the, anyway, of a bow. Um, in the original version of Dark Souls, which is what I'm playing, the Prepare to Die edition, uh, you cannot aim crossbows either. They can only be used when locked on, whereas bows can be aimed with a crosshair on screen. Uh, they fixed that in Remastered, I believe. And we're going to light this bonfire. Now, if you're low on Estus, or if you're you know in bad shape, don't, or if, you think, if you're having a hard time, if you think you're going to die against the next boss, don't hesitate to go ahead and rest here, uh, because this is the closest bonfire to the boss. Uh, I'm not going to rest here, because I want to have the ability to return to the Firelink Shrine with a Homeward Bone. If necessary. Uh, don't rush into this room. Don't be spooked by the fire bomb guys, because they really can't hit you in here. Uh, and if you rush into this room, you're going to have to deal with both of these guys, plus a Hollow Knight. There you go. Here's the aforementioned Hollow Knight. There we go. Can go in here for a little bit of extra loot. Some souls from these guys. As they are full of delicious souls. You drop me an item. We'll check on that in just a second. Hollow Warrior Helm. The all of the hollow enemies can drop hollow equipment, and in general, for the most part, it's not great stuff. Um, it's usually pretty poor defense for the weight. There also are non-hollow versions of a lot of that stuff, too. Let's see if we can get this to work. Hey, look at that. Got all three of them. And a drop. Another short sword. 
I'll take it. The short sword and the long sword have a pretty similar move set. Uh, both are different from the broad sword, of course. Ow! That's one of those cases where I should have been more aggressive, because those guys really are no threat. Aside from their ability to throw firebombs. And I should have just went after them. We'll go ahead and heal up again. Particularly in the early game, and actually particularly with a light armor build, uh, it's a good idea to keep your health topped up, because some enemies do hit pretty hard. But, uh, not as important with the heavy armor build, but, eh, it never hurts. Um, come through here with the resonance key and get you some gold pine resin. Uh, whenever you use that, you will apply a lightning damage effect to your right hand primary weapon. If you run down there to fight those guys, you'll be shot in the back by a crossbowman, so come up here and deal with him. Done and done. Chuckle at the hilarious ragdoll effects. Usually, whenever you go get the gold pine resin, you aggro that knight that's there. Let me go see if I can wake him up. Yeah, there you are. I wonder why he didn't come up. Well, wake up last time. Anyway, he's going to try to come around. Let's go meet him. This way, he's not interrupting us when we're fighting those two guys. The uh, spear knights don't have the damage output of the... Uh, longsword knights, but they are uh, arguably more deadly with their range and their ability to uh, attack you um. no sir <laughs> uh, and their ability to attack you from behind their shield. With spears uh, you can perform light attacks while you have the shield up while using any, actually any thrusting weapon, uh, spears or um, rapiers and so on uh, so up here, uh, this is the stairs up to continue to the next area. As you can see, that barrel is going to roll down the stairs here. Pretty obvious trap. Uh, if we walk up halfway, the dude lights it on fire and sends it down. Uh, you can get away from it just walking. And hilariously, he kills himself when he sets it on fire. We'll go up there in a second, but first, let's walk down here. There's nothing down here except for a ring guarded by a black knight. Uh, Black Knights are kind of a mini-boss type enemy, or a mid-boss. Um, except that I would argue that this Black Knight is actually more dangerous than the real boss of this zone. Um, if you walk up slowly, using your analog stick to just, you know, walk slowly, uh, you can actually get a free backstab on this guy. Let's see if I can get it off. Yeah, I, was, I wasn't close enough. Um, I don't really recommend engaging this guy on your first playthrough, at least not at this time in the game. We'll come back later and fight him. Uh, but if you're good at parries, he's really not that hard. As you can see. The parry mechanic in this game is highly abusive. Uh, in fact, so much so that you can actually kill the last boss with it. Um. Oops, I was late. Alright. Can't parry the shield thrust. Could have parried that, but... Best to wait for the slow overhead slash. Pull up the Estus just in case. Don't forget to lock back on every time it gets back up. And I'm just going to hit him for the last one. There we go. Drop me a Titanite chunk. That is a uh, pretty high level upgrade material. I won't be able to use it until way later. Um, this is the tear stone ring that he guards. He also can drop his shield or his sword. Um, his shield is a very good, uh, kind of a medium heavy shield. Um, and his, uh, sword is a great sword for you, uh, with very high requirements to use it. Uh, however, it is an extremely strong weapon, and if you get one, it will pretty much, you can use it the whole game. Um... And it's the worst of the Black Knight weapons. Uh, as I mentioned, you'll want to break barrels and boxes when you see them. There's nothing in these, but uh, let's go up here. And this barrel is your first crystal lizard. 
Make sure you get him before he runs away, because uh, when they run away, they will attempt to vanish, and that means you don't get their loot. Um, this one, the loot is semi-random. I think he always, this one always gives two Twinkling Titanites, uh, and then other Titanites are random. He gave me another chunk, so that's kind of good, although, again, I won't be able to use it until way later. And here's our next fog wall. This, spoilers, spoiler alert, this leads us to the next boss. Before you run over to fight the boss, though, uh, let's go up this ladder and deal with these cheeky crossbowmen. These guys will gladly shoot you while you're fighting the boss, and it's quite tedious. So just come up here and handle them. They're no big deal. And then come back down, and it's boss time. You can stick with your standard knight gear. Um, it He's really not that hard. You'll see. It's just like the... Uh, just like the Asylum Demon fight. Just stand your ground, uh, guard his attacks, and return fire when you can. He, um, he will do some attacks that will hit you through your guard. Uh, you'll see. I'm sure I'll get hit by one. Also, some of his attacks will send you f uh, flying, just like with the uh, Silent Demon. And it, when those happen, you'll probably want to make sure you have a wall behind you, just in case. He's having a hard time hitting me right now. And I've staggered him twice already. The best place for you to be is up his junk. As you can see. Staggered him again. Your best damage to stamina with almost every weapon is just going to be repeated light attacks. Your best stamina to damage conversion is what I mean to say. Alright. That was just me. Just took it on the skull. Blocking with my face. I don't recommend it. That's gonna hurt. No, oh, it didn't actually didn't go through my guard. That was another one of those. Uh, he didn't hit me, but uh, the shockwave from his attack did. If you position yourself well, you can actually make him jump off the map with that a little backstep that he does, which is pretty funny. worried about getting knocked off there. And there we go. That's all there was to it. I think I took two hits. As is probably not going to be a surprise to anyone who has played video games, those guys become regular enemies uh, later in the game. Uh, so learning to fight them is a good thing. Uh, come on through here. As I mentioned, check the boxes, although you can actually see it faintly glowing if you look carefully. See a little circular glow? It may not come through in the video. We'll jump through. We'll grab that. And then come on down here. Check the scorching on the bridge. This door here leads to another area. And then come down here and talk to Solera of Astora for your white sign soapstone, uh, which will let you put down a sign that will allow other players to summon you. Make sure you listen to his dialogue because it's pretty funny, and his voice acting is great. He also explains a little bit of lore about the game, which is that um, due to the wavering of the first flame, uh, the land of Lordran is in flux, and basically there's like pockets of distorted time. So you have heroes and and villains and monsters from every era all gathering together here. Uh, and I'm going to stop it here, but uh, if you enjoyed the video, if you have any more questions, or if you'd like to see a part two, uh, just let me know.